we're gonna just walk cross country out to um, look at the Chapman's Rhododendron and the, the fire history site where I did my fire history research. The leader of our cross country expedition is Jean Huffman. She managed the St. Joseph Bay State Buffer Preserve for nine years. Today, we're looking for rare plants. Great little um, micro diversity, you know, a small scale diversity of plants. Um, this is a different species of hat pin, little um, sundews, um, little composites of different kinds of sedges. Most of the rare plants are hiding in the grass. It's um, Telephus spurge. Euphorbia telophioides. A thing that makes the Buffett Preserve really special is its concentration of rare plants. It has 21 known species of rare plants that occur here, some that are, are protected nowhere else. But an interesting thing about the rare plants is that so many of them occur in this one little zone that I call wet savanna that occurs between the really wet cypress wetlands and the pine flatwoods. There's this little zone and it tends to be really grassy when it's burned well and it has a huge amount of diversity. You can see from the color of the trunks that this area has burned fairly recently. When I first started here there hadn't been fire for a while and you couldn't even walk through this zone. It was just those shrubs that you see back there, they were all out here in several burns, just repeated burns, got the shrubs back to the zone where they would have naturally have occurred and liberated all these herbaceous species of wildflowers and things. With repeated fires, the woody plants between the longleaf pine will burn away. Hypericum chapmanii, so many of the things that are endemic to this area have the species name of chapmanii. They're all named after Chapman. Dr. Chapman, who was an a early botanist that lived in Apalachicola and did a lot of exploring and uh, discovery of plants in this area. It's the flashiest of Chapman's discoveries that brings us here today. Here's the Chapman's rhododendron, kind of the signature plant of the buffer preserve because it's the only public land that protects this. It's a federally um, listed endangered species. You know, it's related to the azalea, the cultivated azalea, but unlike the um, most rhododendrons, it grows in a, a pretty dry, I mean, a dry and fire-dependent, you know, habitat. Ask Jean where the buffer preserve gets its name. The buffer preserve is called a buffer preserve. The purpose of the acquisition of the land was to buffer the effects of development on the bay. And St. Joe Bay is one of the most pristine bays. It has scallops that people can eat. It's just an extraordinary bay. One of the reasons it's in such good shape is because there's been so little development along the shoreline. Another emphasis of the preserve is encouraging research, and there's been all kinds of interesting research done here. And people can stay at the facility and um, do research both in the bay, which is the St. Joseph Bay um, Aquatic Preserve, and at the Buffer Preserve. Some of the research conducted here is genes. These are fire-dependent habitats, and naturally they would have burned you know, very frequently with lightning. We kind of know that. There are questions about what was the frequency of fire, what was the season of fire, and you need to know that because as a manager, you're setting the frequency and the season of fires within a managed area. The information can be found in tree rings. Right here is a, a really classic ring. Uh, a classic scar that actually killed the cambium and then the, the trees in subsequent years grew over it 
And then you have other smaller scars where the fire just um, got it hot and distorted the rings, but there are multiple, multiple scars in here. Um, this is a really small one, but it's part of the original old growth trees. And the buffer preserve is kind of unique in having a lot of these old growth stumps. Other places they sold the stumps, you know, they excavated them, took them out between the 40s and now. And here they did that too, but they didn't do a really good job, so there's a lot left. And some of them are really old. So what does she mean by old growth? These stumps are from pre-settlement longleaf right, pine. Like fires kind of kill this cross-section dates to 1560. The buffer is a beautiful place to visit, with trails on which to hike, bike, or ride a horse. But to truly appreciate it, it helps to know that the tree stumps by your feet might be hundreds of years old, and that the best plants might be hiding in the grass. For WFSU-TV, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.